Ah, ah, you see that? Clip this guy. Clip this guy. Somebody. Oh, oh, look at that. Yes. What? Oh, sh <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Please tell me someone got that. I can't, I wish I could clip this stuff. Oh. That was amazing. Well, maybe not amazing because just before I filmed that clip, I had broken it and I was just really excited that they had started to actually make decisions again, an intelligent decision. Either way, welcome to another episode of Chaos Craft. I'm Matt with Schematical. And this week, we ran the neural nets through a lava maze. A lot of good neural nets died, but as time went on, intelligent behavior emerged, like this guy, who learned not to walk into lava, but not quite how to solve the maze. Or this guy. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, here we go. We got a runner. Anybody can clip this. Clip it. This guy is on it. He's, oh, he's made it through the horseshoes. He's made it through the horseshoes, guys. Oh, God. He's, he is just playing with death. Oh, God. He kept it. He's just so close there. A variety of behaviors emerged, like jumping. Not quite over the lava there, but when they see lava, they would jump, and that's what got them that far. Others learned how to spot obstacles to their right or to their left, but oftentimes not both. They would get stuck in the horseshoe and die. Our fitness functions were pretty simple. If they travel along an axis, and the axis is oh, the z-axis, for every new block they travel in that direction, they get 20 points, and they get a life effect of 4, and this can have an unlimited amount of time. We also had touch block, and we were giving them a score for touch and block, but they were realizing some of those guys would just run around the base area and, where they spawn, and then they would just touch those blocks over and over again, and they'd rack up a pretty decent amount of points. But right now, we just give them time to live. If they have not traveled, for every five seconds they do that, they get negative three points and a negative three life state. Uh, three seconds less to live. Within a few hours of running the simulation, this happened. Super Jerry, what? What? Are you trying to haunt them? Yeah, I got, yeah I'm a dragon. Yeah, it's, this one is close. <laughs> I'm distracted by your dragon hat. Okay, he's gonna make it. He's gonna make it. <laughs> your dragon hat's good luck. All right, we have a winner. I honestly, I haven't coded anything to happen yet though, but we have a winner. He's just sitting in the corner. All right, first winner of our maze, Steelhead Trout, YTT Gen 25. Let's take a look at his neural net. Yes, and Super Cherry just fired the fireworks. Nice. All right, wow, look at how sparse this is. One middle neuron, it's just elegance and its simplicity. What's he see in there? Oh, it's his health. Um, score 790 and a bunch of life. Well, congratulations, Steelhead Trout. You were the first winner of our maze. You made it all the way through. No one's figured out how to climb those things yet. And yeah, wow. Part of the reason they were able to learn so quick is because I actually gave them a little helping hand on which input and output neurons they had. So I don't affect the decisions at all, but we told them have the input neurons to see rock, have the input neurons to see lava, and then later on we added neurons that allowed them to see blocks that they have touched before or have entered. All this is kind of in the back end right now. We don't really have a front end interface for this. But that really doesn't matter because it works. A lot of them were getting stuck in the corner trying to get over the bridge, and so I decided to try and give them a helping hand by changing up the bridges, making them a little wider. As you can see, I failed miserably a couple times. Eventually, they made it over the bridge. Ooh, look at this guy. Oh, he made it past the horseshoes. Oh, and, and he made it past the stairs. It was quite fascinating to see the different ways in which they figured out how to solve the maze over and over again. 
Here's another one solving the maze. Yeah, and ooh, we got a runner. We got a winner. Yes. Let's see what he's scoring here. That's a Gen 3. Score events. We have 1620. It only needs 1620 to pass, so let's look at. Oh, why did I do? I am very mad right now. You're killing that guy was definitely not intentional. Here's a couple other things that I did to improve the platform. I added in what I call cold storage. So before, if a species had gone too long without making an improvement, and it was in the top however many percent I have it set to, it's 25% right now. If that species is in that top percentage for too long and it doesn't improve, it would get deleted eventually. Well, we actually made it so there's a cold storage thing, or stalled out now. And so these six guys made it you know, to a pretty old age, and it's 75 turns I've got it set to right now, and they were beating, these guys were solving the maze, at least these three were. These, this one might have with that score, but it'd be a close call, and this, these ones just stalled out. So we can go back and look at these guys and look at their organisms, and we can find the top score on one of the organisms, and we can actually pull their neural nets and spawn them back into the game. So this is what a neural net that solved the game would look like. I've also been streaming on Twitch for the long runs. The long runs are runs when I may not be present at the computer the whole time. Typically I'm there for hours, like even when I'm developing. And I'm saving YouTube for when I'm actually engaged in a discussion the entire time and probably won't be doing any coding. So they're a little bit different venues. So if you're interested in following along in the development of this or watching the long runs as they evolve, feel free to hop on Twitch and watch me accidentally kill the winning bot. So what's next? Well, that's really up to you, or more accurately, my Patreons. I spent a little time on the schematical Patreon page, beefing it up so we actually have membership levels like Bee, Snow Golem, Iron Golem, and Wither, possibly some other ones coming soon. That'll get you guys access to Patreon-only voting power. It'll also, I have goals. So we've got goals like bake bread, which are based off of Minecraft achievements, or uh, help schematically eat warm meals with pork chop. All the goals are actually based off of Minecraft achievements, but they do help me provide this type of content and run these type of experiments and pay for the back end for those of you guys that are running the software yourself. And we just issued a poll to our patrons asking uh, if they would like more lava maze or what they can vote on here. They can also suggest stuff or comment, I suppose. I'm looking for all sorts of ideas for new challenges for the bots now that they're learning. So that about wraps it up for this week of Chaos Craft. Next week, we're going to run a different simulation with slightly tweaked behaviors. See if we can't get them to do something totally new. As always, a big thank you to my patrons out there. If you're interested in signing up, check me out at patreon.com, link in the show notes. If you guys can't afford to, which some people said they can't, that's okay. Feel free to share this work, like on various Minecraft or social media or artificial intelligence related threads. It always helps. So thank you very much. And for everybody else, like, share, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll be around. Cheers. Yeah, so that's, that's good. Let's... Let's look at... Oh, why did I do... Mm. I am very mad right now. <laughs>